Hey guys, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Chris, I hope you're doing good. Today we're here in Porto, Portugal. We came all the way here to test this little guy here. Leica Q3, beautiful little beast. Um, I've been testing it now for several days, weeks, so I could test all the features, which I'm gonna tell you more about in just a moment. Let's go explore this beautiful city. Okay, so we came here in Porto and I could not not stop at the Leica store, obviously. Uh, beautiful store, by the way. It's huge, it's huge. I'm used to seeing smaller ones. Uh, I got my uh, the Leica Q3 with me, so I wanted to, uh, you know, just stop by and say hello. So if you guys have the opportunity to come one day, you should do so. Great shop. In terms of battery life, this now has a 2200 milliamp power as compared to 1860. That is great because it gives you that extra boost that on the Q2 was or could have been not enough. But now one cool thing is that I got all the way from charging it before the airport all the way down to Portugal in the evening at night, 11 p.m. I took 350 shots and I still had 30% battery left, which is really cool, by the way. That is cross compatible with the SL2 and SL2S. I did the test on my own and it works just fine. So that is a great improvement, it's just a tiny bit more battery, but it gives you just enough to end the day. When you want to take a photo, for example, low level or high up, you can tilt the screen. So it comes out now like so. And one really awesome feature is when you're having it, the camera on EVF mode, so you only activate the EVF when you look up, the actual screen is going to get activated when you pull it out automatically and turn off when you put it back. Little feature that I really, really like, okay? So you tilt the screen, look up. I'm gonna take a shot of the cameraman right here who I'm gonna put the Instagram off in the comment section down below. You can go check it out, he's a cool dude. And uh, yeah, that is really cool that you can tilt the screen finally. So they added a little feature, by the way, is the shutter button right here. <laughs> I say they added it because, I mean, that, that has been put on the Leica M since forever. I had it on other cameras. But the fact that they put that now on the little Q makes a difference from the standpoint that you can really, A, make it custom the way you want, and B, and mostly, you can have a comfortable shutter button. Like we all expected, they did implement the multi-resolution sensor on this camera following the M11, the M11 monochrome. Therefore, you can now shoot your DNG files up to 60 megapixels, but you can also choose 36 or 18. Why is this great for a Leica camera such as the Q2? It is great because, well, let's say you go out to do some street photography. You can shoot at 18 megapixels and that's fine. Or if you're planning on shooting for, let's say a billboard, a poster, or if you want to crop, if you want to zoom in, if you want to do any of those things, you can choose a resolution of 60 megapixels for your DNG files. And that I think, in my opinion, is something that every single camera should have.
As for the Leica Q and the Leica Q2, we still have the macro feature. It is great. By the way, when you swap to macro, it's going to put your aperture at maximum f2.8. So you're not going to be able to use 1.7. This is really cool. Once again, it was on the, the original Leica Q. It was on the Leica Q2. And the fact of still having this means that whenever you want to take a close up shot, you can still do so and still get great results. Having been using it for now a couple of weeks here and there, it's great to have. Oh yeah, by the way, one cool thing is the fact that they added the perspective control, okay? I'm gonna tell you what perspective control means. This is a feature that they implemented software-wise on the Leica SL2 and SL2S. And what it is, is you can choose basically the, the, the perspective of the shot you're taking. It's a bit of a, it basically adjusts on your JPEG how the, the photo is gonna look, keeping the, the guidelines in place. So here, I'm gonna take a photo without, and now if I go in the menu and I change to perspective control on, you can take a photo that is straight. So they added the USB-C charging. So now if you want to charge your battery, you can do so using the USB-C finally. On the Q2, you could not do that. And well, for example, here for Porto, what I did is I took my USB-C cable and I'm charging everything just using that. Uh, big plus, big plus. You know how on the Leica Q2 you could go up to 75 millimeters in terms of digital zoom on the JPEGs? Well, now they included 90 millimeters. So if you go like this, for example, here I can shoot at 28 mil, 35 mil, 50 mil, 75 mil, and 90 mil. There you go. Okay, I'm now back in Switzerland from this Portugal trip. That was amazing. By the way, did you know that I booked this trip specifically to test the Leica Q3? So I've never tested, I don't think I did, a camera so in-depth as I did for this one before its official release. So I told you a bunch of things so far in this video, but I'm gonna tell you a bunch more that I went through thoroughly as I was there and I could actually test them. Now, I normally finish my video with the conclusion as to, you know, how much I uh, like the camera, what my personal views and, you know, conclusions are, but I'm going to tell you right now, I do find this camera to be really discreet, small, uh, compact and always there when you need it. And that's the, that's the cool thing about the Q series is the fact that it's always there when you need it. And, you know, it, it, it's not like this bigger, mirrorless camera like yes uh, i love my sl2s i love to shoot with it but for the things that i shot in portugal uh, on the streets having something this small was really good and having a 28 mil for those that wonder is a great great focal length in fact that brings me to the first point which is the lens it is a 28 mil semi-lux didn't change so that's not gonna, you know, be different from the Q or the Q2, and for good reason. Having an f1.7 lens on uh, this camera allows you to shoot at any lighting condition. You can really shoot at night, during the day, um, get great depth of field. The shutter does go up quite a bit, so you don't have to worry that much that your photo is not gonna be, you know, uh well exposed because of you know the lighting conditions i tested this in portugal it was 33 degrees celsius in may so it was really hot and really bright i did this test on the q2 so i thought to do it here too and that is the different apertures of this lens uh, to compare how they look and here you go
what about high ISOs? Well, this camera can now go up to 100,000 ISO, which is quite a bit. But maybe you're wondering how good is the quality shooting that high? Well, here are a couple of shots that I shot in Portugal at 100,000 ISO. And as you can see, the image does fall apart, which is to be expected because, I mean, this is 100,000 ISO, okay? So... The thing is, it does fall apart, but not as much as I thought it would. It is still usable. If you have to take a photo and you have no other ways of taking it, then you have it. Some of you might be wondering, how is it to shoot 100,000 ISO or different ISOs for that matter at different resolutions? Because as I told you, you can now choose 18, 36 or 60 million pixels. Well, I did the test and here it is. There are different function buttons that you can customize. You got two on top here that I use for the framing. If you want to, you know, crop in the JPEG for different uh, focal length. And I use the other one for the EVF to turn on or off the EVF. On top here, I've mapped this to lock my exposure, my auto exposure. So I can, as you can see on most of my photos that are very contrasted, I use that function a lot. And in the back here, you have the center joystick uh, where you normally press to see the information, which I kept it that way, but you can change that and map it to whatever you want. So that gives you a bunch of customizable function buttons. And that was very useful. Once you map them and you get used to it, it is very, very cool. This camera can shoot up to 8K 30P H.262 ProRes flat L-Log profile, okay? That is a mouthful, but what that means is you can shoot in very high resolution. So as I was there by the beach, I decided to test this out and here are a few samples. The focusing of this camera was highly improved. There are four different features and functions that were uh, included. Now, I didn't look in depth enough in the days that I had it. I prefer to shoot with it. And the way I shoot is very old school. You know, I just focus, reframe, take my photo. But for those that use and rely on autofocus a lot, this has very good features and a very good and improved autofocus. In fact, when I shot my videos in 8K, I could notice um, that the focus would just follow the person or follow me in the video. And um, it didn't lose track that much of the face, which is a huge improvement for such a small camera. By the way, I tried to put a, an external mic via USB-C and I wasn't able to make it work. So in case you want to use this with an external microphone, I don't think you're going to be able to do so. Okay, so here we are. This is the IBIS. If I would be using this for vlogging, uh, this is the full extension of my arm at 28 mil. Uh, I'm shooting 8K, uh, this is flat profile, L-Log, and this is how it would look. So I have no external microphone, I only have a little tripod to hold the camera in place, and that's pretty much it. So if I was to walk a little bit around, uh, this is what kind of shakiness you would get on your footage uh, in terms of vlogging. So here you go. I hope this gives you a little idea how it is, and this is... Uh, Auto tracking in terms of uh, focus, there you go. So you can also have a better grasp as to what results you would get. So I, I believe you could do this. I mean, you don't see the, the screen because there's no flip out screen, which is great. Thank you for not doing that. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna look, uh, it's gonna look okay. The resolution of the EVF was now improved. Um, it is very, very smooth, very snappy. Uh, you can do a refresh rate of 120 hertz, which is very, very, um, very impressive. I kept it at 60 just for battery sake, but, and also because I don't need to go all the way to 120, but it is crisp, it is sharp, it is bright. You're gonna see every single detail, like the way you see details in this EVF is pretty impressive. 
It is the same for the LCD at the back. They bumped up the resolution as well. Uh, it is scratch proof and you see very vividly even in direct sunlight. Now, when I say you see very vividly in direct sunlight, doesn't mean that you're going to see it perfectly because the nits uh, are not like 2000 up, but you still see quite well what you're looking at. And obviously if there's no sunlight, you're going to see perfectly and very crisp every single detail. I got the Leica app, the beta version, which will now be available when you watch this video. But basically it got improved with this Leica Q3 to a point where it takes two seconds to transfer a DNG file. And that is seven times faster than the Leica Q2 and 10 times faster than the original Leica Q. Uh, that is a great improvement because, and I did use this when I didn't have a computer with me in Portugal. I just turned on the app, selected my photos, put them high like full resolution jpegs on my uh, cell phone and you're good to go you can now download your videos as well with this app which is a good uh, addition and you have different looks such as contemporary classic selenium sepia and so on so those are basically going to be like you know your your basic um jpeg settings but you can actually apply looks on your jpegs directly from the app. And I believe and presume that in the future, you're gonna have more of those looks that can be downloaded on your camera from the app. The body itself is rugged, as expected, very tough. The lens, it is IP52, so you can go in a humid and or dusty environments. I did so, I went to the beach with it, which as we know is very humid, uh, very, you know, there's like salty air and um, there is sand and so forth. So I used it there and it did not have any issue. So you can really, really have fun with this camera. I went in temperatures that were pretty warm in the middle of the day. And again, nothing to complain about. In terms of colors, let's, let's just talk about the colors for a moment, okay? I shot everything in either black and white or natural. I love the natural uh, simulation for my JPEGs. That's what I use on my SL2S as well. And let me tell you, the files that come out of this thing are unreal. This is not, this is not even just, hey, this is not marketing, okay? This is what I think. I think the files are really good. Uh, when I showed them to my wife, by the way, she said they look very similar to the Leica M9. So I feel like Leica is getting close to what the CCD sensor of the M9 used to give us, that Kodak uh, film look uh, on their JPEG. And I kind of fell in love with it. I normally, maybe you know that, shoot a lot in black and white. I love shooting in black and white, high contrast and so forth. But in this case, with this little guy, I shot a lot and I found myself, sh you know, switching to natural more than usual. Now, obviously where I went, there was landscapes and, you know, houses painted in different colors, had a little bit that Cuba feel and look. So I did a lot in color because I wanted to capture those colors. But most of the time, I use those files in color. And that's surprising, even for me. So I'm very, very happy with the results in the DNG files. So much so that I haven't touched a uh, RAW or a DNG file yet. I only used the JPEGs straight out of the camera. In fact, that's what you're seeing in this video so far. I haven't edited any of the files that you see, any of the photos. And you can see for yourself how good the colors look. After all these pros, which is basically 98% of what I think about this camera, there are a couple cons that I do want to bring up. The first one is the fact that there's no internal memory. Um, that would have been something useful, especially when, um, for example, in Portugal, and that's going to bring me to my next con, um, I had a tripod Arca Swiss little uh, mount underneath here for the Peak Design Capture. Okay, so you see pretty much it's like a little square. I had it on and as you can see here, we have the tripod mount right next to the slot for the SD card. So every time I wanted to, you know, download the photos, I had to unscrew the mount and put it back afterwards. Not a big deal, but if you're someone that uses this all the time to shoot and you want to keep a, a, anything under, you will have to remove it each time. So having an internal memory would allow me to shoot more photos uh, for example, the M11 monochrome has 256 gigabytes internally. That would have been great to have that here too. The last con is the fact that, like I said, for the Q2, uh, there's no protection for the EVF, for your eye, no eyelid. So you, sometimes I find myself doing this so that the sun doesn't leak into my EVF. You know, it's really hard, but sometimes I couldn't really see my photo 
property. So I had to really cover it up. And for those with big hands, there's gonna be an accessory, which is a grip to help you hold it better because right now it's very flat, which is something I love, the bricky feel of it. Reminds me of the M. But if you want to, you can buy that separately. And what that's going to also do is it's going to recharge your Leica Q3 wirelessly if you wish to do so. You can buy the little plate and you see under here, there are those little connectors and those can be used to charge it wirelessly. There's also other accessories such as, well, the shutter button, as I told you earlier in this video, but also uh, on top here, you have the thumb rest and things like that. What do you think of this little Leica Q3? Is it a camera for you? What are the improvements you like the best? Do you think there's anything else that could be improved? Write it down in the comment section below. I'll answer it as fast and as soon as possible. Like always, keep taking some great shots and I see you in my next video. Cheers.